千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Once upon a time, in ancient China, there was a Taoist who decided to become a hermit. So he moved to a mountain to live alone, all by himself. And this was because he felt the lack of distractions would let him elevate his spiritual cultivation to an even higher level. One day, as he was taking a walk in the woods, he came across an old man resting against a tree. Curious, he greeted the old man and asked what he was doing, all in the middle of nowhere. The old man said, "I am trying to get back to the village below the mountain, but I am tired and I cannot take another step." The hermit saw that this was an opportunity to demonstrate his compassion. So he told the old man, "It is all right. I will carry you there." The old man was thankful and got on the hermit's back with some difficulty. He was frail and not heavy at all, and the path to the village was all. Downhill, so the hermit found the going quite easy. After a moment, the old man said, "Kind sir, may I ask for your name so that I can thank you properly?" There was a hint of pride in the hermit's voice when he responded. He said, "My name is Cold Ash." The old man seemed puzzled. Cold ash. The hermit was glad to explain. It is what I call myself nowadays, because my original name is no longer meaningful. I renounced it when I came to the mountain, and gave myself a more fitting name. Cold ash. To this, the old man said nothing. Another moment passed in silence. Then, the the old man said, "Sir, I'm sorry, but but what what is your name?" The hermit thought, "Hmm, strange. The old man did not hear me the first time. He must be hard of hearing." So he answered in a louder voice. As I said, my name is Cold Ash. The old man seemed to hear better this time. Cold Ash, why such an unusual name? Continuing in a louder volume, the hermit explained. You see, it's because the fires of anger inside of me have all burnt out. And the ash that remains has gone cold. That's why, cold ash. Again, the old man said nothing. The hermit thought to himself, "Hmm. You know, the explanation that I just gave the old man—he probably didn't understand. I kind of expect this because I'm at such a high level of spirituality. You know." There's a、uh, probably very few people in the world that can actually understand my explanations. So he also said nothing. They continued downhill for a while longer. Then the old man asked, "My friend, can you tell me your name?" With some annoyance, the hermit realized it might be the it might be the old man's mind, not his hearing. 
that was weakened by age. Maybe the old man wasn't hard of hearing. Maybe the old man's mind had gone feeble. So he said, I told you, I am cold ash. The only thing left after the fire has gone out. All right? The old man seemed impressed this time. He asked, what does that mean? The fire has gone out. Now the hermit was pretty sure at this point that the old man must be ignorant as well as feeble, feeble-minded. So he tried to keep his voice calm. <sighs> it means I have reached a high level of refinement in my cultivation, so I am no longer affected by worldly emotions. The old man fell silent again, and the hermit hoped he would remain silent this time. <sighs> Please don't talk again, man. Wow. But after only a few minutes, the old man opened his mouth again. Young man, I would like to know your name. In a fit of rage, the hermit threw the old man off his back, down to the ground, and yelled at him. What is wrong with you? How many times do you want me to tell you? My name is Cold Ash. Cold Ash. The end. So, what is that story trying to tell us? It's one of my favorite stories. There's uh, another one like it that I often use as a quiz. But let's talk about this one. We often associate the Tao with nature. So we have this familiar mental image of a temple or monastery far away from civilization. You know, the Shangri-La, the, the lost place, this ideal place, the idea of a Taoist cultivating in hermitage sounds reasonable. Like, why not? Now, this story disagrees with that entire notion. Why is that? The truth is, hermitage will certainly give you physical isolation. That's what it's all about. But not necessarily spiritual elevation. Cold ash enjoy peace and quiet from the lack of distractions, for sure. Nobody was there to bug him. But this did not mean that he became better at handling distractions. Due to the lack of practice in that remote area, he got pretty rusty. You know, we can expect that. He got pretty rusty in social interactions, and maybe he didn't even realize that. So when he was called upon to deal with another human being, any negativity or annoyance would affect him more, not less. So this is the central message of the story, everybody. The hermits imagined he was at a higher level of spiritual refinement. But, the, but that particular illusion shattered. It shattered upon contact with reality represented by the old man. Despite this cold ash moniker he gave himself, the truth was that anger still smoldered within him and it was ready to burst into flame in an instant. And if I were a betting man, I would wager the same is true to every other hermit throughout history. Another important point is about the danger of assumptions. What I mean is, Kodash assumed he was spiritually accomplished. He had this high regard for himself. He looked at other people with some disdain. And I just want to sound out a warning for all of us, because 
this can be very common, you know, for many people, including you, including me, for many people, whether they live in a mountain, like cold ash or somewhere else, maybe live in the city. It's uh, the kind of arrogance that can often rear its head when someone uh, first begins acquiring knowledge because that knowledge acquisition would tend to inflate the ego of a novice because he knows he's starting to get to know more than the novice, uh, but he hasn't learned enough yet to realize how much more uh, there is to learn. So in the Tao, uh, we oftentimes caution against knowledge, uh, making one swell up in the head. This is what it's all about. So if we uh, find ourselves behaving in a condescending way when talking to other people, like the way the hermit, Code Ash, acted with the old man, then, then that's for sure, that's a warning sign that ego is starting to get the best of us. So, so why social engagement? Why interacting with a whole bunch of people? Why be among people? Well, it is so that we can avoid this trap, this trap of arrogance. We need to interact with other people to gauge our spiritual progress. One way to gauge it is to see how well we deal with people because you know, and I know, that some of them can be very negative, very difficult, rude, inconsiderate. You know what I'm talking about. You know who they are. They are the ones who push your buttons, the ones who get under your skin the ones you absolutely cannot stand. I've got people like that in my life, and I'll bet that you do too. Now, this is not denying that there's great value in getting away from it all and reconnect, reconnecting with nature. At the same time, we also know that the people we find so annoying, well, they don't cease to exist just because we don't see them for a while when we're out in nature. They're still out there. They're just as annoying, as rude, as negative as ever. And they're ready to get under your skin again as soon as you get back to civilization. That will never change. And the only way that the whole situation will change is if you change yourself. That is, elevate yourself authentically so that you are able to handle them much more easily. And that, that really is the challenge, isn't it? The challenge is to deal with others calmly, gracefully, smoothly, no matter how deserving of a tongue lashing they may be. If you can master this challenge, then your spiritual attainment, you will know the attainment is real. You will find that there's no need to move away from civilization because the Tao is within you. The Tao resides within, no matter where you make your home. There is no need to change your name to Code Ash or to anything else because the essence within you is more truthful and powerful than any names. So this is why. In the Tao, we say, do not isolate yourself as you go about your day. Do not isolate yourself as you practice Tao cultivation. Indeed, you want to interact with people because the good among them are your teachers, the bad among them are your resources. So this is another point that Lao Tzu makes specifically. Just as the Tao is everywhere, you can find something to learn from every encounter positive or negative, with anyone. So this is the real Tao. This is the real way to elevate your cultivation to a higher level, not to take on a vow of silence or to retreat into the wilderness, but by mixing it up with people.
Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us travel safely. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.